Okay, igneous rocks. So, uh, igneous rocks, when we look through the rock cycle, are all formed from the cooling of molten material. And different rocks contain different minerals and crystal sizes. And those form by two ways, based upon the composition of the molten rock, and the location of where the lava or magma cools. So most magma forms deep within the Earth's surface due to the melting of rock caused by high heat and pressure. Temperatures inside the Earth range from 650 to 1200 degrees Celsius. To give you a idea, you are sitting at 20 degrees Celsius at the moment. So uh, rock has to melt at 650 to 1200 degrees Celsius. Molten rock is less dense than the solid rock because of, remember, that heat, the kinetic energy, the motion of the material. It's molten, so the molecules are moving faster than solid rock. This causes it to want to rise. However, there is a uh, hard outer crust that prevents it. So the magma is under pressure, and there are only certain places within the earth that you can have the magma come to the surface, whether that be at a plate boundary, which we'll talk about next unit, or in a location such as a volcano. And when the magma does reach the earth's surface, it is called lava. So we classify igneous rocks based on two things. They're classified by their location of formation, so intrusive or extrusive, we can actually identify in three ways. We can also do by grain size, so mineral or crystal size. And then they are also classified by the material they contain. This is based upon their color and density. So in a fast cooling liquid, there's very little time for differences in crystal size to occur. So you end up with a lot of small crystals. In a slow cooling magma or liquid, large crystals are favored since there's more time for growth and more time for the atoms within the molten liquid to organize themselves into a crystal structure. Intrusive igneous rocks are formed inside the earth, and the rocks form at deep depths. The temperature is higher, there's more surrounding rock, and therefore it cools very slowly. Since it's cooling so slowly, there's more time for crystal growth, so you have larger crystals or mineral grain. Yeah? Uh, after. After. Yep. So extrusive igneous rocks are formed at or near Earth's surface. There is a cooler surrounding temperature and there's greater surface area. Because typically extrusive igneous rocks are lava. So you have the lava coming out of the volcano, therefore it has a it's spreading out, having a greater surface area. Often it hits air or water, which are a lot cooler than underground. So therefore, it, crystals have very little time to form and they're very small. The entire rock tends to look homogeneous in, in uh, composition, either all dark colored or all light colored. So we can also identify or describe igneous rocks based on their grain size or their crystal size. This is not something I will test you on specifically but it's something you will need for your lab next class. So you have a farinatic rock, which is very slow cooling, very large grain size. You have porphyritic, which has a large and small grain size from one, small, one slow and one fast cooling phase. So for example, that's a good example of a foranetic rock. Then you have aphanetic, which is a fine-grained crystals, extrusive, which is here. And then you have glassy, very fast cooling, non-crystalline. Uh, and then the last one, which is not pictured down below, 
is vesicular, which tends to have holes in it. it it's very fast cooling, non-crystalline, gas is typically trapped inside, so it looks like as holes within the uh, rock structure. The third way we identify igneous rocks is based on their composition. So rocks will contain different minerals and crystal sizes based upon the chemicals found in the magma or lava. The mineral compositions, they crystallize at different rates, and this de determines the composition. The rate and order of crystallization is based upon the Bowen's reaction series, which I will not test you on, but it's something we're going to look at today. And scientists use the proportion of silica and silicate minerals in rocks to, cl to classify them. So here's your Bowen reaction series, and I apologize, it's a little hard to read. But on the left-hand side over here, you have your temperature from highest to lowest. Then here you have your different minerals coming and their rate of crystallization. And over here you have your type of igneous rock. So for example, the one that crystallizes first would be olivine. And then you have small amounts of feldspar. And this would be an ultramafic rock, very dark, very dense. Going down further, you end up having your basaltic rocks. And that has more uh, pyro pyronine and a lot of feldspar. And then as it goes down, it's getting cooler. The magma is slowly cooling. You have your biotite, a lot more feldspars. That's your andesitic. And then the ones that cool slowest are your muscovite micas and your quartz, which give you the granite type of rock. So we tend to use two terms interchangeably. We'll often call basaltic rocks mafic rocks or mafic rocks basaltic rocks they are the same thing depending on what textbook you look at either one is formed from magma that is rich in iron and magnesium but has very little silica so because it has so much iron and magnesium in it it's very dense it has a lot of metal in them they form the uh, minerals crystallize at a very high temperature and because they crystallize at a high temperature, they tend to be uh, small crystals, and they tend to be all very dark, and there it is, uh, one color throughout. Then you get into your intermediate rocks. These are also known as andesitic rocks. They have a mineral composition of about 50-50. 50% mafic, 50% granitic. Can be a little bit off from that. Uh, about 55% silica. They crystallize at an intermediate temperature. And because they have a little bit more silica and a little less iron and magnesium, they are lighter in density and also lighter in color. And then the last type of rock is your granitic rocks. These form from magma that has a lot of silica content, greater than 65% silica, a lot less iron and magnesium, they crystallize at the lowest temperature, so they take the longest to solidify. This gives the crystals the ability to form large structures. They are lower in density and lighter in color. All right, so there are three questions I want you guys to work on right now. What are igneous rocks? What are way, ways are they classified? And what factors affect the rate of cooling? I'm going to give you guys five minutes to work on that, and then we're going to go over it. 